Hi, Prince and Princesses. I'm Auntie Kay, and this is our children's Sabbath school program. And guess what? You are welcome to come along with me. Hello, my Prince and Princesses, and welcome to another children's Sabbath school program with me, Auntie Kay, on this beautiful Sabbath day. I'm happy that you, all of you, are here with me. Yes, I am. We're on lesson three, and today we're looking at the unknown. God. Yes, I'm excited to hear the story that Da Vinci will read to us so that we will find out what the story is all about, the unknown God. But before we get or go any further, of course, you know we must first start with our welcome. So once more to all of you, my prince and princesses, Graham, everyone, thank you for being here with me. Now, let's hear our welcome. Hello and welcome to Andy Gay's Children's South School Program where Prince and Princesses all around the world get to enjoy and learn about the love of God through sign language, messages with Princess Malloray, character teachers from Nails, Nate and Nugget, sing along time, Mary Versus, Story Hill with Princess Da Vinci, test your knowledge with Quiz Kids, hashtag Puzzle Fun, enjoy object lessons with Auntie Patty Pat, Bible questions with Ask Pastor Nasa, great crafty crafts and good yummy goodness with the girls' tasty treats. So, no matter where you're living on this great big planet, you are welcome to participate, enjoy and share. Yes, we live far and wide, but God's love connects us no matter how you look, where you're from, the color of your skin, or even your culture. Welcome! Great. Now that we've been welcomed, yes, indeed, it's now time for us to learn how to sign our very important message sign of the day with Princess Marla Ray. Happy Sabbath, everybody. Let's sign together. We serve God when we tell others about Thank you, Princess Malloray, for every week dedicating your time to teach us how to sign our important messages. Thank you so much. And now it's time for us to go before our Father in prayer. So let's close our eyes and clasp our hands. Wonderful Father, thank you for this beautiful Sabbath day where the sun is shining down on my face <laughs> and the ducks behind me are singing praises to you also. Thank you for bringing us through this week, no matter what it is we had to do or what it is we had to deal with. Thank you for allowing us to be here at this very moment. Thank you for the prince and princesses who are going to learn, who are going to praise and who are going to give their lives over to you because of this program. Thank you for blessing us and thank you for keeping us, dear God. Thank you for just loving us always. In Jesus' name, amen. So, now that we've thanked our Heavenly Father for being with us and helping us, it's now time for us to learn from Niall as he shares with us character building tips. Up next is Niall's Nature Nuggets. Mmm, wow! This grass smells amazing. Do you know what it's called? Lemongrass. And do you know there are many lessons you can teach us? Here are a few. Number one, be temperate. When lemongrass gets too much water, its roots begin to rot. Water is a good thing, right? But too much of it causes damage. We should be temperate and not use too much of the things that are good for us. Number two, check your temper. Do you know that lemongrass is also called fever grass? It lowers body temperature very well. This reminds me of our tempers. It's important to ask God to lower our tempers so we can react better in difficult situations. Number three, savor God's blessings. Have you ever had a nice cup of lemongrass tea? I love it. Every time I drink a cup, I am amazed at how delicious it is. This is one of God's blessings. Let us savor it. See, I told you, the lemongrass is an amazing character teacher. My prince and princesses, do you know why Niall shares these great tips with us every week? 
It's to help us to improve our characters. Yes, indeed, improving our characters so that we could be better as we grow day by day. So thank you so much, Niall, for sharing with us some other great points that we could use so that we can be better. Thank you. Oh, the sun feels so good on my skin. Wow. <laughs> but now, now, we know what time it is. It's one of Annie Gay's favorite time. Yes, indeed. It's time for us to get our praise on. It's sing a long time. Jumping up and down. Jumping up and down. Jumping up and down.
It was sing a long time, sing a long time. <laughs> and we all know that I love to sing praises. My whole body moves. I'm singing, I'm clapping, I'm dancing, my shoulders move. I just love singing praises with all of me. Sending up all the praise and thanksgiving to my heavenly father. And thank you for joining in too. And now it's time for us to... Somebody said it. Yes, it's time for us to hear our memory verse for lesson three. Hi everyone, my name is Celestine from United States of America. Our memory verse this week is tell how much God has done for you. Luke 8 verse 39. A great job, Don, my darling. Thank you for sharing with us our memory verse. And now it's that time of the program where we get to hear our story. So Princess Da Vinci, she's over at Story Hill waiting to share with us the story of the unknown God. So turn up the volume in those ears so you can listen carefully. <laughs> Hi boys and girls, it's story time. The Unknown God. Have you ever pretended that you didn't hear your mom the first time she called you? Sometimes we pretend that we can't hear someone, especially if they want us to do something we don't want to do. A long time ago, Paul tried to tell some people about the good news about Jesus, but many of them didn't want to listen. Thank you so much for traveling with me to Athens, Paul said to his friends visiting from the city of Berea. These people had just recently learned about Jesus. They had followed Paul to Athens so he could teach them more as they traveled. Please send Silas and Timothy this way just as soon as you can. Paul waved as his friends left back to go home to Berea. Paul was lonely in Athens. There didn't seem to be a single person there who knew about or believed in Jesus. Dear God, he may have prayed, show me how to share your love with the people of the city. Beautiful statues, buildings, and artwork surrounded the people of Athens. Expensive temples filled with all kinds of idols seemed to be everywhere. Athens was known as a city overflowing with intelligent people. But as Paul walked around, he felt sorry for these people. They thought they knew so much, but they really didn't know the most important thing. They didn't know Jesus. Paul started talking to the people. Soon his words began to make people think and ask questions. They wanted to hear what he had to say about Jesus. One day, someone invited Paul to speak at the Aeropagus on top of Mars Hill. The Aeropagus was a special place where philosophers met to talk and listen to the latest ideas. Such men were considered to be very intelligent and wise. It was an honor to be invited to speak there. Friends, Paul began, I have seen that you are very religious. Everywhere I look, I see statues and altars to different gods. On one statue, I notice the words, to an unknown God. I am here today to tell you about him. The true God of heaven made the world and everything in it. It is God in heaven who gives 
life and breath to everyone. As he continued speaking, many of the people listened carefully. Then Paul told them about the resurrection of Jesus. Some of the people said, "You're crazy. This is just a bunch of nonsense." But there were a few who said, "We want to hear more." Not very many people in the city of Athens believed in Jesus. They thought their own wisdom was better than God's wisdom. But there were some who became Christians. Dionysius, an important man in the city government, and a woman named Damaris, chose to follow Jesus. Paul was able to talk boldly to the intelligent people of Athens because he knew God. What can you do to get to know Jesus better? Do you really want to know Jesus so you can tell others about him? Happy Sabbath! Thank you, Princess Davincia. Thank you, Princess Davincia. Thank you, Princess Bumblebee, <laughs> for every week dedicating your time to sharing with us our story every week. And you do such a great job. Thank you. And now, coming up next, it's time for us to hear from two brothers, and they're going to share with us what they learned from this story, the unknown God. Nathan, another great job. Thank you so much every week for sharing with us your personal lessons that you would have learned from our story. A great job as usual. And Nathan, I want to let you know you guys have fans all over the world. They too enjoy what you share with us. So now that we've heard from Thim and Nathan, it's now time for us to. It's heading on over to Quiz Kids. Paul said thanks to his friends who traveled with him to where? Was it A. Athens, B. Berea, or C. Calvary? A. Athens. Paul asked for two of his friends to be sent to Athens. Who were they? Were they A. Judas and Saul, B. Peter and Matthew, or C. Silas and Timothy? C. Silas and Timothy. Which statue did Paul see that gave him the opportunity to talk about Jesus? Was it A. The Sun God, B. The Unknown God, or C. The Sea God? B. The Unknown God. Hashtag puzzle fun. Hashtag puzzle fun is up right now. The Unknown God Puzzle Directions To find the item that inspired Paul for his speech on Mars Hill, draw a line from one dot to a dot. 
beginning at 1. So Quiz Kids has been done, Puzzle Fun has been done, it's now time for us to hear another great mission story. Big Bright Light Grandmother was acting strangely when she came home on Friday night in Mazabuka, Zambia. Usually, Grandmother arrived home singing. But this time she walked silently into the house and went straight to bed. She did not say a word to Grandfather. She did not say a word to little Cynthia. She lay down and closed her eyes. But little Cynthia could tell that Grandmother wasn't sleeping. Grandmother moved her arms and legs. She turned onto her right side and then onto her left side and then back onto her right side. Something was wrong. Grandmother certainly was acting strangely this Friday night. Finally, little Cynthia went to bed. Grandfather also went to bed. In the morning, Grandmother told Grandfather and Cynthia why she had acted so strangely. She had been scared. Grandmother said she was drinking at a bar when the sun started to go down. Then the sky grew dark, and she decided that it was time to go home. She was singing loudly as walked down the dark street toward the house when suddenly a dazzling white light appeared in front of her. The light was not from a car or a street light. The light hovered in the air like a big bright ball. Grandmother stared at the light. She did not know where the light had come from and where it might go. The song that she was singing stuck in her throat. Then the bright light vanished. Trembling from head to toe, Grandmother quietly walked the rest of the way home. Little Cynthia was astonished to hear about the big bright light. Grandfather also was astonished. You'd better stop drinking, he said. This could be God talking to you. Little Cynthia wondered whether Grandfather was right. Was God trying to say something to Grandmother? Little Cynthia was still thinking about God when she heard a knock on the door. Grandmother opened the door. Outside stood a woman wearing a bright blue dress and a white woolen hat. Happy Sabbath, the woman said. I would like to invite you to church. Grandmother didn't have to be asked twice. Still frightened by the bright light, she wanted to go to church. Little Cynthia wanted to go to church. Grandfather also wanted to go to church. The family attended the Sabbath worship service at an elementary school. It was a special Sabbath program organized especially for visitors. That night, before going to bed, little Cynthia heard Grandmother pray for the first time. Dear God, I'm not living a good life, she prayed. Help me to stop drinking. The next night, Grandmother prayed the same prayer. Every night for two weeks, little Cynthia heard Grandmother pray to God for help. She wondered what would happen next. One morning, Grandmother got up with a big smile on her face. Little Cynthia knew that God must have answered Grandmother's prayers. She was right. Grandmother never drank again. She also gave her heart to Jesus. Neighbors were shocked to see that Grandmother no longer drank. How did you stop? Said one. Tell us about the secret medicine that you got from the witch doctor. Said another. Grandmother happily told everyone that no witch doctor had cured her. It was the God of heaven who had helped her to stop drinking. The medicine that I used was prayer, she said. Grandmother did not stop praying. 
Little Cynthia heard her pray for grandfather, and grandfather gave his heart to Jesus. Grandmother prayed for her 14 children and many grandchildren, including little Cynthia. Many of them gave their hearts to Jesus. Grandmother is a real missionary because she brings people to God by praying for them. Little Cynthia is glad for the Friday night when grandmother came home acting strangely. It was the night that God began to turn grandmother into a missionary. So by now, my prince and princesses, I believe you all know exactly what's coming up next after our mission story. It's now time for us to hear from Auntie Patty Pat as she shares with us through some object lesson what we could learn from the message. Mm -hmm. Let's sing. Noah, Noah, who build the ark? Mr. Noah built the ark. Hey, boys and girls, do you know we serve God when we tell others about him? Yes. We have an interesting way to tell others about God. Guess what's her name? What's your name? Hadassah. And is Hadassah a name in the Bible? Yes. Who is it? Esther. Queen Esther. Yes. And what's his name? What's your name? Malachi. And Malachi is another name in the Bible. And guess who this is? I bet you guess it's Samson. But that's not who he is. Let's see who this is. Noah. And how does your name help? Some people ask me if I'm going to build an ark and then I get to tell them about the story of Noah. Oh, boys and girls. I don't have a Bible name. My name is Auntie Patty Pat, but I can tell others about Jesus. If you have a Bible name or if you have friends with a Bible name, you can call just the way Hadassah sometimes calls her granny and her friends and tells them the story of Queen Esther. Or you can tell any of your friends about stories about God. So I don't know who you're going to talk about, whether it's Samson or Noah or Malachi or but do something for God. Thank you, Auntie Patty Pat. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for every week doing such a great job. You guys notice that I've been saying great a lot for this episode because everything is done so great and I appreciate everyone who participates in the program. So yes, Aunt Patty Pat. You did a great job too. And now my friends and princesses, after Auntie Patty Pat, it's now time for us to... Ask Pastor Nasa. Hi, I'm Hadassah. My name is Hadassah Shai. I'm Pastor Nasa. I'm four years old. Am I too young to be baptized? Hey, thank you so much for that question. It's a really good one. Well, you know, in the book of Matthew, chapter 19 and verse 14, Jesus says, Let the little children come unto me and forbid them not, for as such is the kingdom of heaven. You see, boys and girls, Jesus loves the little children. He loves all children, all the boys and all the girls from all over the world. But, we have to make a decision that's right you have to make a decision as a boy or girl to accept jesus into your heart and once you do that he comes into your heart and he lives into your heart but you may need to learn some more things that's right you may need to understand some more things about jesus and how he wants you to live so the best thing that you can do is to tell mommy or to tell daddy or to tell your pastor and to say I want to give my life to Jesus and I need you to teach me and they are going to do their best to make sure that you learn all that you need to know so that at the right time you can be baptized and be with Jesus. Isn't that wonderful? I'm so glad that little boys and girls are making the decision to give their lives to Jesus. So how about you do it today? Until next time. So you all know what word's coming up, right? <laughs> Pastor Nasa, you did a great job at answering uh, Princess Hadassah's question. Thank you so much. Great. Everybody gets A+, plus, A, 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 A+, plus this week because everything has been done great. And now it's time 
for Aunt Polly, who's over at Crafty Craft Corner. She's going to share with us a craft with something from our story for this week. Growing up, I used to watch a commercial with a tiger that used to say great. Yeah, so you know great is coming up again. Aunt Polly, I love that cross. And I like the fact that it's edible too. You did such a great job of decorating it. Thank you so much. Great job. <laughs> oh my goodness. Another greatness is coming up right now. And it's Princess Decal with Decal's mm, Tasty Treats. <laughs> One thing that Easter is known for in many places around the world is hot cross buns. And since it's Easter weekend, that's what we'll be making today. Let's get started. Our ingredients for today include shredded coconut, flour, warm milk, two eggs, butter, salt, yeast, sugar, cinnamon, nutmeg, and allspice. You'll also be needing mixing bowls, a dough cutter, wooden spoon, a whisk, mittens, a kitchen towel, a lined baking pan, and whatever you'll be using to decorate your buns. To begin making your dough, whisk your milk, yeast, and sugar together and let it rest for five to 10 minutes. In a large bowl, whisk your flour, salt, and spices together. Stir in your shredded coconut. Add your eggs and butter to your foamy milk mixture. Use your wooden spoon to combine your wet and dry ingredients. Cover your mixture and let it rest for one hour. Place your dough on a floured surface and roll into a log. Cut your log into nine equal pieces and place them in your baking pan to rest again for 30 minutes. Bake your buns at 350 degrees for 20 to 25 minutes then let cool and decorate as desired.
The cross on our buns reminds us of the cross that Jesus died on for our sins. I'm so happy to know today that God is all around us and we serve him when we tell others about it. Time to bite into this bun! Now, Princess DeKal, you know I can not not give you a great also. It was great and it was yummy. And thank you for sharing yummy, yummy, yummy greatness in my tummy, tummy, tummy. Thank you so much, my darling. And my prince and princesses, lesson three is done. But have no fear. I'll be back here come next week Sabbath with lesson four. So thank you for staying with me. Thank you for singing praises. Thank you for listening. Thank you for participating. And you know what? Thank you for just being here with me. I totally enjoyed and appreciated so much. So thank you so much, my prince and princesses, and have a great, happy Sabbath. And now, you know, I have to remind us that, you know, although our Heavenly Father is everywhere, He really wants to be in our hearts. So I love all of you. Yes, I do. Until next week's Sabbath, be blessed, be good, and be loved. Let's end with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be my name. Thou kingdom come, thou will be done. On earth as it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord's Prayer Happy Sabbath, everyone! Happy Sabbath, everyone! Happy Sabbath, everyone! Happy Sabbath! Happy Sabbath! Happy Sabbath! Happy Sabbath! Happy Sabbath, everyone! Bye! Happy Sabbath! Happy Sabbath, everyone! And we'll see you all again next week!